I'm headed out of Johannesburg. I'm going on an overnight work trip to Bloemfontein, like an O. I cannot wait to see friendly people and blue skies because at the moment Johannesburg is dry and dusty and has pestilence and pollution and it's like breathing in this amber layer of wheat picks. So I'm really looking forward to get out into the wide open spaces. This week, just off the highway, is staying on the highway for a few hundred kilometers before we get to the good stuff. Right away, I want to apologize for the quality of the camera work, which is going to look like it was done by a drunken one-armed chimpanzee. It's mostly me losing a battle of wits against the selfie stick. You see, I'm entirely on my own, and uh, the schedule is tight, so production values are definitely going to suffer. One thing you'll notice is that the magnificent Toyota is not part of the plan today. Unfortunately, I don't want to risk taking her for that long drive all the way to Bloemfontein. I know she'd make it, but it would be a very long trip. So uh, we're taking a more modern vehicle this week. It's hours and hours of rolling hills. Still quite dry at this time of year. And some people think that the drive is boring, but obviously they just don't have the requisite childish sense of humor. Honestly, this is the dilemma of driving through the Free State. I mean, which do you go for first? The miraculous head or... Yeah, I think I'll go that way. The other one on second thoughts doesn't sound so great. Bloemfontein lies within the municipal area of Mangaum, a Sasutu word that means place of the cheetahs. Imagine how magnificent it must have been, this piece of felt that was home to the fastest creature on earth, the cheetah. As opposed to nowadays when the fastest creature is some Johannesburg motorist hopped up on energy drinks trying to arrive in Cape Town five hours before they started out. The established story is that the name Bloemfontein comes from a fountain where beautiful flowers were planted. That may just be a legend. There's also a story that the place is named after a man named Jan Bloom. And then there's a persistent rumor that I love. But there was once a cow named Bloom who fell into a fountain. Bloom Fontaine. I found the hotel I'm looking for. Looks like it puts the orange back into free state. Let's go inside. Yep, J.R.R. Tolkien, author of The Hobbit and The Lord of the Rings, was born in Bloemfontein. He's a free starter. Now this plaque says that he was born right here. I'm not so sure about that. I mean, Victorian women were pretty stiff upper lip, but giving birth halfway up a wall seems a little bit extreme to me. The Hobbit Hotel is a cool place to stay for anyone on a quest to get as close as possible to Tolkien in South Africa. There is a debate about how much South African influence there even is in Tolkien's work, because of course, he leaves Bloemfontein when he's only three and he never returns. But how much of Africa stayed with him? Because we know that when he lived here, he was bitten by a baboon spider and that it was very serious. And then he goes on to write a character like Shelob in The Lord of the Rings, one of the scariest spiders in all of literature. So judge for yourself. Do you believe, as he said later on in life, that he never even remembered that spider bite? Or is it possible that he carried a little bit of Africa around with him for the rest of his life? And there he is, the genius who wrote an epic tale of struggle and heroism and the battle between good and evil, but also of gentleness and redemption and love. Now there may come a day when Bloemfontein forgets about J.R.R. Tolkien, but it is not this day. So while I was driving home, I was thinking about the fact that Tolkien is a quintessentially English writer and he drew on the mythologies and the languages of the North, but he's also a child of the South. And he was born in a place where the languages around him, like Sasutu and Afrikaans, must have been strange. He couldn't understand them. They were even otherworldly. And then years later, when he's in a faraway land and he's conscious of his own mortality, perhaps he needed to create a language of his own, one that only he could understand. 
Okay. I get it. I am speculating wildly and there's no evidence for this. And there's no way of knowing. But hey, I come from a country where the word for 11 is elf. And really, we're all just made up of bits of other people's stories. And we crash around wildly in confusion. And then one day when we look back, maybe if we're lucky, it's interesting and it makes some kind of sense. Like that famous Tolkien quote, not all those who wander are lost. If you've been enjoying Just Off The Highway, thank you very much. Please give me a like and a comment. If you'd like to spread it around, please give us a share. And if you want to make sure that you don't miss the next episode, then be sure to subscribe. And a special thank you to Div Lamprecht of Bloemfontein for the idea for this week's episode. See you next week. Bye.